Mundane Man here again, and today I'm going to be servicing my 2012 Ram 1500 truck with the 5.7 liter Hemi in it. It is uh, due for its semi-annual oil change. I don't usually need to change it more than twice a year, pretty much because of the mileage that I do on it. I'm doing more mileage on it now, but uh, up until now I've only needed to do it twice a year. I am using Castrol Edge uh, 5W20, which is the recommended viscosity for this truck. And I'm using a Fram XG2 oil filter on it. It is the uh, one that's designed for synthetic oil, however, you don't really probably necessarily need to use that. The oil I'm using is, as well as synthetic, I should have mentioned that. This says it's a 20,000 mile or 32,000 kilometer uh, filter. I usually change it out at about 7,500 kilometers, which works out to what? 4,500 to 5,000 miles, something like that. So let's get at it. Get the truck up on our Rhino ramps. I need that to uh, have enough room to get underneath it. These ramps are uh, rated for 3,000 pounds a piece. Okay, the oil filter is right up in here. And of course the steering rack is right in the way of it, which is not very handy. But you can get your hand up over the uh, cross member here. And what I like to do is I like to lay a rag over top of the, uh, the steering gear just so it doesn't get get all oily because oil will run down the filter. Make sure your tray is in the right position and I did already loosen the filter but it should only be hand tight because you shouldn't over tighten these things. Sometimes I have a tendency to over tighten it. try and let the oil drain out as much as it can. I'm not the tidiest of oil changers so I always make sure I get cardboard on the floor because I'm going to end up spilling something somewhere. Now I should mention I did uh, start the truck up and run it for a bit so I'm not changing the oil cold. I uh, don't like to get it up to full operating temperature but I do like to make sure that the oil has circulated. And that's going to drip for a few minutes. While the filter is uh, draining, or not the filter, the area where the filter attaches, I like to put a little uh, fresh oil on the gasket of the filter so that when you screw it on, it does not kind of seize itself into place. So it's always a good practice to make sure you uh, oil up the gasket on the oil filter. Okay, so most of the drippage is stopped from the uh, old oil coming out of the the uh, filter mount position. So I like to just clean the surface off, make sure it's good and clean. And we got our new filter. It's got the gasket all cleaned up. Not sure I can be able to do this with one hand or not. Should just nicely thread on there. There, and as soon as the gasket meets with the surface, you want to give it about a quarter to half a turn. You don't want to overdo it. And that should be good right there. 
and then just clean up your mess after no matter what oil seems to get everywhere yeah it drips right on the the motor that engages the the front transfer case okay that looks nice and clean now on to the oil pan way back there that's well, not that far back when you're holding the camera but when you're lying on your back it seems far away okay so there's the drain plug to the oil pan back here and it is a number 13 and it shouldn't be overly tight either so make sure your tray is in the right position because you got seven liters about seven liters of oil coming out of here right away just made it it looks pretty dark but I think it's the oil kind of has a darkish hue to it to begin with I would certainly do though for an oil change like I said I usually change it at about 7500 kilometers which is around ah, 4500 to 5000 miles now that's going to take a little bit to drain out we'll just make sure our tray is still in the right position to catch the drips having it up on the ramps not only provides good access to the underside of the vehicle but because the uh, drain plug is at the back of the oil pan it pushes all the oil there so you're more than likely to get most of it out uh, than maybe if it was flat on the ground that's probably going to trickle for five minutes while I'm under here I like to give everything just a quick inspection to make sure there's no major leaks or anything check the boots on all the drive shafts and on the steering gear make sure there's nothing else leaking anywhere everything is dry under here which is good uh, checking to make sure the struts these look like they have coil over struts in them uh, or there's no leaks anywhere uh, there's no leaks out of the transfer case all of the boots look good on the drive shafts and the steering gear and doesn't appear to be anything leaking overall that belt looks pretty good there's no cracks or anything in it might be time to replace it anyways I'm at about 79 80,000 kilometers so that might be another maintenance chore I'll take on at a later date I didn't uh, buy a belt but overall just give it a quick inspection and make sure there's nothing major going on from a visual perspective I like to do the same at the back you know check the shocks here no leaks all the bushings look good on the uh, control arms and what have you I can get the drive shaft to move it's not moving at all no leaks in the rear seals or anything Muffler looks pretty good. So overall, on the underside, everything looks nice and dry. Well, for the most part, all the oil's drained out. I think it could drain like that forever. I don't know how much time a person wants to give it. But it is still dripping, so I'm just cleaning the surface off right now. and maybe we'll wait a few more minutes okay I think I've waited long enough it's still dripping a little bit but the vast majority of the oil is out of there so I cleaned off the plug and I cleaned off the uh, the surface so that should thread in there nice and easy you don't want to cross thread it cause yourself some grief so thread that in and grab my wrench it's 13 mil again and just tighten it down now it doesn't have to be forcefully tight either just mates up with the surface and give it a, a bit of a tug 
and she's good to go. And we'll wipe off that oil. And that's pretty much the underside done. Okay, we're going to pull our oil pan out of here, or oil catch basin, I guess, if you will, and uh, start working on the top where we'll check fluid levels, put the oil back in, and that'll be pretty much it for this job. Okay, let's get my light in a better position here. We are going to put in 7.3 liters of oil, or 7 quarts. Sure, everything's clean here, and I'm going to use a funnel. So this first jug is five liters of 5W20, and it's synthetic castrol edge oil. And it meets all the manufacturer's specifications. Let's move the camera up a bit. off my step. Truck's up on ramps so I have to use the step to get up here. Okay so we're going to use two and a, about two and a half liters of this jug. And that'll make our 7.3 liters or seven quarts oil. One thing I want to mention is do not drop your oil cap anywhere. I dropped it and it fell down between somewhere around the engine and frame and do you think I could find that? Forget it. I had to go buy a new one. I spent probably an hour and a half looking for the stupid thing. Let's go around and check the fluids. So this is the brake fluid here and the max line The max line is there, so we're down about, that light's kind of in the way there. Uh, let's see, the max line is right where my finger is. Uh, so we're down probably half an inch. And um, I'm not gonna top that up because I know the brakes, especially the front brakes, are getting due to be done. And once you push the pistons back in and put new pads on, that level of uh, fluid is gonna come back up again. But if you do add brake fluid, make sure you add the manufacturer's specified fluid because there seems to be many different types on the market now. And down below we have the power steering fluid. And that looks good too. Still nice and red on the lid. Power steering fluid, unless you have a leak, generally doesn't, doesn't uh, go down in level. All of these fluids, they, they say, should be replaced at some point because uh, they can break down due to heat. I've never had a problem with it. Brake fluid, you know, might be a good idea to be doing on a, on a more frequent basis, especially if you tow and your brakes are getting really hot because um, as the fluid degrades, it could end up starting to burn off and then you will see a reduction in levels and, and potentially completely run out of fluid, which would not be a good thing. Next is our antifreeze. And this guy has a dipstick in it, so you can see the actual level. And you can kind of see the bubbles within the holes of the, the dipstick. And we are approximately one dot down from the maximum level. And because I didn't completely warm it up, I would not be adding fluid to it. Um, because uh, as you run and, and the heat builds up, you're going to see an expansion of the, the fluid and it's going to flow back into the overflow tank. What I am going to do next though is take an electrical reading on the fluid itself and that will give an indication of whether um, the, the, you know, there's metal materials broken down in the antifreeze and it's time to uh, give the engine a flush. Okay so we've got our multimeter here and I'm going to take off the radiator cap. Now of course safety first make sure that your radiator cap or your sorry your engine has not been operating for a while so that there is pressure built up into the radiator cap. Because if you do that, you will get a face full of antifreeze and a severe burn. So be cautious of that. We got our cap off. 
Now I need a good ground for my meter, which I'm going to use the battery for. Put that in there. Now when doing this test, we are looking for 0.4 volts or less. So let's turn our meter on to DC and I'm going to put the positive probe in the antifreeze. So we have a reading of say 3.15 somewhere around there. It seems to be bouncing around quite a bit. So we are under the uh, 0.4 volts but it's a good sign that uh, it might be time to uh, flush out the antifreeze. What happens is there's many different types of materials, metal materials that make up uh, an engine these days and over time the those materials kind of wear down into the uh, fluid and turn it into uh, more of a corrosive solution than it is a, an antifreeze or lubricant and so that's uh, when you need to start flushing it out but we are good for now maybe in the fall before winter it might be a good uh, good idea to flush out the antifreeze and when you do flush out the antifreeze, it's probably a good idea to change your uh, radiator cap at the same time just to keep everything current. Okay, so we've checked our brake fluid, we've checked our power steering fluid, we checked our antifreeze for level. The next thing I want to do is we're going to check the air filter and see what kind of shape it's in. Okay, so this is the air box on uh, this RAM. It's the factory air box. I haven't done anything different to it. So there is a hose here that you need to take off. And one, two, three, four. Uh, four clips that you need to snap to open the top of it. That's, that wasn't me farting. That was my... Uh, step moving out from underneath me, honest. Okay, we'll loosen off that clamp and pull that hose off, just a bit out of the way. And we'll undo our clips. Got one here. They're basically spring-loaded. Where's that other one here? Oh, I forgot to mention as well, we have this PVC hose here that also needs to come off and where's my other clips we got these two. Oh, there's one right in front of my face here so there we go and then the air box there's got to be another one somewhere I'm missing one two three Oh, there's one back here in the dark. And that should lift off. Pretty easy now. It kind of tilts forward and then there's two notches at the back that are uh, holding it in. As well. So I wasn't, I, I was pretty sure I'd changed this the last oil change, but it's always good to have a look at it. Yeah, that one's pretty clean. You can hold it up to the light and I can still see light shining through it so I think that one is good for until the next oil change so we'll put that sucker back in and we'll put the air filter back in or the air filter cover I'm gonna have to do this with two hands just a second okay the air cleaner goes on same way it came off, put your clips back up, just spring loaded, one in the back that was elusive to me, there is one more, is it over here, nope that's it, one, two, three, four clips, and we need to put our PVC hose back on, and the air intake hose. And tighten down your clamp that you loosened off to get at the uh, air filter. So that was easy peasy. The uh, air filter looked good.
we'll change it probably on the next oil change. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, run up the engine and run it for a little bit. I'm going to back it off the ramp so that uh, we can get it on level ground because I want to do two things. I want to uh, check the transmission fluid and then I want to check the oil level again to make sure it's up to snuff. So let's run her up, take it off the ramps and uh, we'll check uh, the transmission fluid and check the oil. fluid you want to check when it's up to uh, operating temperature generally but um, the engine w and transmission were sort of warm so I'm just going to check the level now and if it's down a bit it's probably just because the uh, fluid is not as hot as it should be or the transmission is in a full operating temperature. Okay, so we are at 12 halfway between the uh, cold and the hot, which is good. I always like to give the fluid a sniff, check for anything burnt, check the color of it. It's still nice and red, so I don't see any problems with that right now. shut her down and check the oil level now. Okay, it's, the engine's been off for a couple minutes, so the oil should have settled down a little bit. Pull out the dipstick, let's see what we got. So right now, we are right at the full mark. So. That is excellent. We don't need to add any more. Always check your oil on level ground. Okay, the next thing I want to do is test the battery. And I have this battery tester. And basically what this does is it puts a load on the battery and you hold it for about 10 seconds and it determines the strength of the battery. So it's just a matter of connecting it up. Black goes to negative. Red goes to positive. There's also a reading on it that tells you the battery voltage. And mine's currently sitting at 12.2 uh, volts, which is uh, good. And then what I'm going to do is hold this button for 10 seconds, and that'll put a load on it. This gets really hot, so you got to be careful. So after doing that uh, crank test, or basically uh, load test on it, my battery voltage is still showing 12 volts, so that's a good sign that the battery is still strong. Okay, the next thing I like to do is just check all the lights and everything, make sure they're still functioning properly. I think a lot of times you'll get a, uh, a light on the dash that tells you that something's out, but let's check our flashers first on all four corners. Got the mirror light working, that signal light's working, that one's working, mirror one's working there. Tail light and tail light. So far they all look good from a signal perspective. Now let's test the running lights. Turn off our four ways. Got the headlights on. Headlight, that's the low beam. And running light, fog light. Same on the passenger side. Hard to tell, but it is working. That's 
working. And license plate lights. Let's check the high beams now. See how often I use them, I don't know how to turn them on. And the high beam's working on that side. And on that side. The only thing I don't know if that's really working are the brake lights, but because uh, I'm only one guy I can't test them, but what I like to do is just I'll close the garage door once the, the truck is in and I can see in my mirrors if both lights are on. Okay, that's it for this edition of Mundane Man. That's a straightforward oil change on a 2012 Dodge Ram 1500. I guess they just call them Rams now. So a Ram 1500 with a 5.7 liter Hemi. I didn't need to change the air filter this time, which is good. So we'll probably be doing that next time, which is fairly easy. The antifreeze test showed that it was good still and the battery tested out okay. So overall, I think the truck's in good shape. So remember, if you like these kinds of uh, videos, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share with your friends if you think they'd be interested in it. And hey, you might find these videos a little bit mundane, but that's why uh, I'm called Mundane Man. And sometimes it's better to watch somebody do something than to actually do it yourself. Anyways, that's it for this one. We will catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.